Okay, so there's me and then there's the classroom. Now, if we turn on camera five and we take a look at my app here, uh, keep the classroom up, but then uh, take away me and go to camera five if you can in the back room there. Yeah, classroom and then the other camera. There we go. Okay. All right. So as you can see, here's my, oh, my phone. Okay. So I'm starting brand new. That, that robot doesn't know where it is. So for the very first time, all I have to do is hit start. start okay. Please. Now you'll see it leave its docking station. And now it's doing exactly what I said before. It's turning around and looking at where it is. The top uh, sensor is a LiDAR sensor. So it's basically sending out a laser to see where the edges are. Now, what you'll see it doing here is, a, is the second part of what I said. It starts to go along the walls while it's still spinning and checking everything around. You'll notice that it's bumping into these walls and the reason is because those walls are glass. So one, it's checking to see, uh, because LiDAR can't see through glass very well. So, oh, my phone just died, but I'll turn it back on in a sec here. LiDAR can't see through glass very well, so it's using the bump just to make sure that um, it is glass or it is a wall. And now it's starting to build the map, so I will turn on my phone that went to sleep here. Now, if you take a look uh, back on the camera five and keep the classroom up. Okay. So now my phone was blank before it was empty. So you can see how quickly it started to build a map of this room. Very quickly, actually. I mean, that, I think that's under 30 seconds. So now it's hard to see on the camera. I'm not sure if you can zoom in or how clear you can get on that. But if you look at the map, you'll actually start to see the desks that it sees. And you'll see the path that it's following as it still continues to build. Now, its vacuum is not on right now. All it's doing is looking around at its space. Once it has this space, it will remember that space, and you can, of course, name it. Then there's some other things that you want to do as well. So this classroom has an open door in it, um, and sometimes that door is open and sometimes it's closed. Oh, it sees the camera now. <laughs> sometimes it's open and sometimes it's closed. So in the case of it being open, you certainly don't want it going out of the room. And in the old days, we used to have to um, put little laser blockers up so that it couldn't go through that space. But now what we can do is once it's completed its map, we can actually block that space and it will remember that block um, so that it won't go out of the room. Okay. It will notify the operator of, of everything that's going on. Uh, if there's anything, an obstacle it encounters, if it's going to run out of batteries, if the... Um, uh, the recovery tray is, is full, if the filter is blocked, all those things are on the machine and it will tell you that as the operator. It has three different power levels that auto adjust. So um, it has a what we call quiet mode, standard mode, and then a boosted mode. These modes are, are all just different levels of power. If it starts to go up on low pile carpet, of course it will increase its suction to try to get deeper clean on the carpet, and then it will reduce its suction if it's on harder surfaces. So um, oftentimes I would say that the, the biggest questions we get asked about it is, um, how is this different than something that I could go to like, uh, you know, Sainsbury's or wherever you sell them in the UK and, and buy? So there's a few different reasons. One is that this machine uh, is able to place itself into commercial spaces. So for example, uh, in an office building, I can have first floor, second floor, third floor. And within first floor, second floor, third floor, I might have 10 different cobots. So if you imagine uh, a hotel, it's got a few different floors. On each floor, we have 10 cobots uh, that can all be uh, organized and then all put together in a master report that shows the cleaning for the day. So for example, um, imagine a 10 story hotel has a hundred different cobots. I can then go and pull a report and uh, how long did the cobots clean for today? On what floors? Uh, how much did they pick up, for example? And we have another dock for it as well. It's an optional dock. That means that it can go and, and take all of its dust and put it into that uh, bin. I don't know how else to Self explain emptying, it. Yeah, yeah it's, it it's empties itself. So. So those are a few of the different uh, features on it. Maybe this also, we have a slide here with a movie to show. It's 
to, to protect it not falling, for example, uh, <coughs> into a stair. Yeah. Maybe uh, explain a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So there are a number of safety features on this. Uh, this cliff detection is, is one of them. So it, it senses if there's a dangerous drop. Um, and of course it bumps, so it also can detect if uh, it says, yikes, no, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. This is actually an interesting thing from the development point of view. When we work on our larger cobots, you have to be very careful about weight balancing because even if you detect the, the edge of something, yeah, if, yeah, if all your weight is in the front where your detectors are, it will fall off the stairs anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we don't want that. Yeah. So it's something that we've had to learn um, on our development path. So, uh, and there's a lot of things in the works uh, right now.